Welcome to Texas, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Chris, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for all the work that you do at the, uh, uh, this proud organization in defense of the right of gun owners all across this country. Uh, as governor of uh, the great state of Texas, let me welcome you all to the Lone Star State and the beautiful city of Houston. I think it's been eight years since uh, we last had the honor of hosting the NRA, and, and um, I happen to think that's a little too long. <laughs> but uh, I understand we got to spread it around a little bit and let it go to some other places and maybe some cities and states that quite, may not be quite as enlightened as they are here in the state of Texas. So, uh, but you know, you think about it, things have changed a, a good bit in, in Texas since you all were last here. So, um, and, and then let me catch you up on just a few things that have, that have transpired while you were gone. Um, there's a lot more of us in Texas now than the last time you were here. Our population is growing by about 1,000 people a day, and uh, the vast majority of them folks are working. Because we're creating jobs day in and day out in this state. Texas employers created something in the neighborhood of 1.5 million new jobs since you were last here. When you last visited, the Texas Longhorns were about to embark upon a national championship season with a Heisman Trophy finalist at their quarterback. Today, there's another team from Texas that's preparing to make a title run with a Heisman Trophy winner calling the shots. That team happens to play its home games in College Station, though. That's the Texas Aggies. You might have heard a few whoops out there when I said that. If anybody didn't know what that means, just ask someone and just whoop at them back, so uh, you'll know. You know. But some things remain the same. The governor of Texas is still a proud lifetime member of the National Rifle Association. Obviously, in Texas and the NRA are almost a perfect fit. Because in Texas, we believe in freedom. We believe in personal responsibility. And we believe in the God-given right for people to have peace of mind, to defend themselves and their family. In Texas, we never lose faith in the Founding Fathers' wisdom to include the Second Amendment to the Constitution among the Bill of Rights. I wish that sentiment was found in more places, particularly a place whose boundaries are on the Potomac River. Thankfully, Texas has sent some fine individuals, capable, principled individuals to Washington defend our rights. And I want to thank Senator Cornyn and Senator Cruz for each playing a major role in fighting back, fighting back against the anti-gun lobby and their latest attempt to undercut the Second Amendment. See, we realize, we realize it was just the most recent round of what's already been a long fight, but it's an important fight, and one that will ultimately win. It's part of a pattern that we see all too often. Someone clearly impaired, filled with hate, commits a horrific crime. In the wake of these tragedies, you can almost set your watch by how long it takes for people who hate guns, hate gun owners, to begin another campaign to add a new set of federal gun laws on the books. We all have empathy for the families of those who lost loved ones. Everyone does. But the correct response to these tragedies is not another federal law that criminals will simply ignore anyway. I realize I realize to those who don't understand the issue, gun laws 
may look like an easy fix. And it may make even, some of them even feel like they've solved the problem. Except they don't fix anything. While they may win a few in the news cycle or keep our president scoring political points, they do nothing but make it harder for law-abiding Americans to own guns. And intentionally or not, by keeping guns out of the hands out of those who use them properly and legally, they're only making it easier for predators to prey on the defenseless. You know, the National, the National Rifle Association is the voice of experience. It's the voice of common sense, reminding everyone that a threat to gun ownership is a threat to the basic constitutional right. It's a strange notion that with the stroke of a pen, any president could prevent something from happening in Colorado or Connecticut or even Texas. As an organization, we say, hold on a minute. Let's, let's think about what we're doing. And at that point, invariably, some of the media try to turn us into the bad guys. It, It'd be almost laughable if it, if it weren't such a profound misconception. Nobody likes gun violence, especially NRA members. We own guns for sport, for collecting, for self-defense. It's also a way for us to spend time with those that are closest to us. And I know personally, many of my fondest memories are hunting with my dad, with my own children. I'm looking forward to building that same relationship with my grandchildren. And I, I bet most of you, I bet most of you have some great memories about the, the first gun you ever owned. I do. It was a little Remington single shot, bolt action, 22 long rifle. It was given to me by my grandfather. I still have it. The NRA is about safe, sane, and responsible gun ownership. Beginning, middle, and end of story. That's what the NRA is about. See, even beyond the basic infringement upon our rights, these gun laws sell the false premise that they're actually solving a problem. And they're not. Sure, maybe they made it harder for friends to sell or trade guns between themselves or a father to pass on a family heirloom to their children. So while they might make the anti-gun lobby feel buoyant and give the liberal news media another reason to pat themselves on the back, the root causes of these violent incidents would remain and they would fester. The laws, liberals, and the anti-gun lobby trot out in the wake of every tragedy would do nothing to target the causes of these incidences. They do nothing to help those with severe mental illness who go undiagnosed, untreated, ignored. They do nothing to curb a culture that views violence as daily entertainment. They do nothing to put people in place who can quickly and efficiently respond when an armed threat surfaces. Listen, there are no easy fixes to these problems. Certainly nothing as easy as demonizing gun owners, gun rights supporters, and increasingly manufacturers. Over the last several months, my office has been reaching out to companies being forced out of their home states by these draconian laws or even public pressure. I'm inviting them to the state of Texas. Amen, brother. We will happily welcome those gun manufacturers who feel vilified, any of their employees who are in danger of losing their livelihoods due to this kind of hysteria. 
our message to them and our message to everyone in the country is simple. There is still a place that loves freedom in America, where people can pursue their dreams free from the knee-jerk government regulations that occur. That place is called Texas. That place is called Texas. We want to invite you. If you're not already here, you consider coming to the place that still loves freedom. God bless you. And through you, may God continue to bless this country we love so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.